Alright, so turn around to the class C and we're going to get started. All right, wow, what a, what a great turnout. I just wanted to, to thank everybody for coming, especially the mayor, the counselors, everybody that helped, all the occupiers that helped organize this forum. It's been a, a long planning session, and so it's really great to see all of you come out on a really nice uh, night, especially. So thank you for all coming and participating. Just wanted to make sure we have a we have a raffle that we'll be announcing at the end of the evening from Equal Exchange. We've got some fair trade coffee and chocolate. So we'll be. You have to stay to the end of the meeting to, to, to get the prize. <laughs> um, if you haven't already, we have a ticket that you can sign up. So I just wanted to say that this. This meeting was a result of a mic check that happened in February of the city council meeting. And it's a, a way for us to also model some different ways of participation and civic engagement. And so the model that we'll be using today for our agenda is actually a model that's been used in the Western Mass GA. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break up into small breakout groups. We have five breakout groups, and each group has a facilitator and you'll get a chance to elect a spoke in your group, and that person will report back at the end of the meeting about what happened in your group. And so you'll get a chance uh, to, to be a part of that. And I, with that, I just wanted to go over some of the hand signals to make sure that everybody knows what they are. And so we'll start out by doing this. And does anybody know where this comes from? Basketball. Basketball, the wave. <laughs> this is actually this is actually sign language for applause, and so it's a way also when you're in a really deep discussion and things are moving really quickly that people can show how they're feeling without stopping the meeting. So when you're in a really intense discussion, you can just do this. It's called a temperature check to so just gauge with the group of how things are going. So that's one. Um, another thing, if you have something to say, to say, you just raise your finger like this. And that means that you're going to be on stack. And stack is just a way to keep track of who's speaking in the meeting. So in your small groups, if you have something to say, hold up your finger and the stacker will write your name down. Um, also, if somebody is, is talking a lot and um, it's kind of want them to move on, we've got a very <laughs> polite symbol. And it's just, this means wrap it up. <laughs> say, Traveling. Keep going. Um, also, if you, if you can't hear, if you're having trouble hearing, this is, you can do this. And what do we use in Occupy Northampton? There's another symbol. Ears. 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 So if you can't hear, you can just do this, and, and that means speak up. Um, anything else that down. is important? The down okay, twinkle. So this also, if we can do a temperature check, and this is also, yes, I like what's happening. This is, oh, it's okay, and this is, this means I don't really like what's going on. So that's a, when somebody says a temperature check, that's what they're, that's how we gauge the crowd. So, great. Uh, we also have some, I'll just kind of go over this briefly. So we're going through the guidelines next, and then we're going to get into pairs, and we'll do an introductory exercise. We'll save the introductions for the small groups for everybody. And after that, we're going to get into the five breakout groups. So we've got corporate accountability, public space, economic development, civil liberties, and civic engagement. And so when we get to that section, people will talk about what, what those topics actually mean. And then once we're done with the small group discussions, we're going to meet back into this group, and we'll have report, report backs on what each group discussed. And then we'll save some time, about 15 minutes. At the end, there's a lot going on in the next few weeks with the Occupy movement. Uh, we've got a bunch of announcements to announce at the end. And so just a reminder that we have to be out of here by 9 o'clock. Um, so the janitorial staff can clean up. So we're going to keep it right at, at 9. So we'll be out of here by 9 o'clock. So we're going to help with the guidelines? Yes. So um, hi, everybody. My name is Javiera, and um, I'm helping out with facilitation this evening. And we wanted to just establish some group guidelines for how we're going to interact tonight. We're going to be talking about some issues that Folks may have some disagreements about, there might be a lot, some feelings that come up, and we just want to make sure that we, we have an agreement about how we want to engage with each other. So, um, 
I'm sure all of you have been in meetings or in classrooms or in various group experiences where there have been guidelines that have been really helpful in making things go well. And I'm just wondering if folks want to shout out a couple of guidelines that you want to propose for this evening. One, one speaker at a time. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Right here. Uh, speak for yourself. Don't speak for other people. Uh huh. So, uh, what's another way of saying something like that? I make I statements. Mm -hmm. okay. And I come from a human resource development and empathic responses. So I believe in you statements. People should respond to what people said and what they're feeling, if possible. And so you could call you it responses. A response. Responding to what people said. Uh -huh. And do you mean like literally respond? Literally respond. Like your head? No, literally responding. 85% of productivity is dependent upon that flow of information. Uh -huh. And when it happens, when it takes off, is when you respond to somebody else, mm -hmm. to what they said. Most importantly, their feeling, which is almost impossible for people. But I'll put it out there anyway. Okay. Respect. Respect. Can you say something about what that looks like? Or uh, that looks like um, uh, understanding that whoever is speaking, uh, you can make, you hold respect for their opinion, mm -hmm. and likewise they will hold respect for your opinion. Mm -hmm. um, Anything else? That we speak up so people can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> there's one called step up step back and that just means if you have a tendency to speak a lot to just take a step back and if you're shyer in groups that you actually step up a little bit and let your voice be heard I, I, I think you know, the, the attitude of curiosity I mean this is a this is really a first as far as I can tell and uh, so, so being curious about what's going to emerge and what people's ideas are. And the other thing is just this acronym that at General Assemblies and others that I find really useful, and it's a little uh, ironic perhaps, the acronym is WAIT, W-A-I-T, and it stands for Why Am I Talking? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> So um, promoting kind of an attitude of curiosity, but then also being aware or thoughtful about why you're speaking and, and what it, you know, why you're taking up airtime or space. Anything else? A combination of get to the point and be brief. Uh-huh. So that's sort of connected to the weight acronym, right? And um, step up, step back to some extent. Any other guidelines that people want to propose for the group? I think listening ought to be included here. Uh-huh. I know it's kind of obvious, but it doesn't hurt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number one. Act. <laughs> other dialogues use active listening to emphasize how... That's what the response of this... Yeah. Yeah, I put down your active listening. Cool. Um, I want to throw out there one, which is agree to disagree. Um, we're not necessarily here to convince people of our point of view. We're really here to, to listen and share, and there may be times where we need to agree to disagree, and that's okay. But that doesn't mean that we've done something wrong or we've failed. So. So just temperature check. Um, if this sounds good to you, up, if you're kind of like, eh, and if you're like not happy, so it seems like we're good. Great. And in small groups, if folks come up with other guidelines that you want to use in your small groups, that's totally fine too. But these are a place to start. Great. So now we're going to just take some time to get to know one person in the room and um, do a little mini icebreaker. So I want folks to turn to somebody next to you who you don't know very well. Okay. Find a partner. <laughs>
turns oh, we uh, speaking so we and listening. And each person in the group is going to get two minutes. Um, and when it's your turn to speak, you get to just respond to the questions that I'm going to pose to you. And your partner is going to be listening actively. And what that means is that you're really just going to be listening. You're not going to be chiming in. Um, you're not going to be asking questions. You're just going to be giving your partner your full attention and listening to what they have to say. And then at the end of two minutes, we'll switch. And um, what I'd like you to do is tell your partner your name and um, why you're here and what you hope to get out of tonight. So each person will get two minutes to talk about that and then we'll switch. Does that seem clear? Everybody? Great. So just agree who's, I'll tell you when to switch and agree who's going to go first. And we'll start. Go ahead. <laughs> So before we, um, we hear about the small groups that we're going to be getting into shortly, I'm just um, interested in hearing from two or three people really briefly, um, just, just a, a little something about what you heard or what came up for you in your pairs. Just from one or two people. We can't hear from many because we want to get, get on with it. But. Oh. Well, I think I'm glad you picked me because my person is Francis. Crow. And, and I think she said some things that are really important for people to hear about why she's here and that um, a, she's given up on national change as being very possible and thinks that the best potential for change is local and so that we should be here talking to each other and that she's really known for her stand against war. But one of the biggest causes of war is our lifestyle, <coughs> which we can work towards changing, mm -hmm. and we can help each other do that. Mm -hmm. I want to hear from maybe one or two other people. Okay. I love it because my partner here, Howard Moore, is a member of the school committee, and he wanted to come here to teach <coughs> know nothing about the Alpine movement. He wanted to know come here to see whether he could find a different way or a new way to uh, connect or make more important his role in the school of men. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. great. Great. Um, my partner, Wendy, kind of just says it's all so ugly, overwhelming, and frightening. <laughs> yeah. I need to find a way to Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to move on just because our time together this evening is short, but um, but thank you all for sharing. Is it to you, sharing small groups? All right, so we know that there's a lot that we could all talk about tonight, and hopefully there will be more than this forum to talk about and plan for a future. Um, but we keyed out a couple areas for our discussion groups. And we'll have a member from Occupy Northampton describe what these groups will be talking about. So we're going to get into these small groups. And there's going to be a facilitator that will guide you through a series of questions in these small groups. So the first one is uh, public space. I'll put someone else first. OK. Economic development. So I think um, my group is just going to be discussing economic development in Northampton, um, what we think is working in Northampton, what isn't working in Northampton, um, some of the larger corporations that are recently in town, they've posed some issues to the town, and so maybe that could be discussed, really. Okay, civil liberties. Uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the implications locally of the, uh, the new laws that have been passed on uh, restrict that seem to be restricting our civil liberties and perhaps the uh, Constitution or the uh, Bill of Rights. What laws? Public space? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about why, how, how we might be able to get more non-contractual, I'm thinking, public space. Well, there's really a hard time finding free public space for people to more spontaneously get together and do all kinds of things. I know as an artist, I didn't get the space I needed, and it's too late for me, but maybe I can help others. Okay, great. And 
and then we've got corporate accountability and financing. Right? And financing. I can I can say briefly what that's going to be about. Did you want to speak to it? No, go ahead. Well, essentially, we want to talk about uh, the corporations um, in this city and. Um, what we're getting from them and what we're giving to them and um, trying to help that uh, work out in a better way than some of us feel it is now. Um. Great. And then uh, the last group will be public participation and civic engagement. Do you want to say something about that? I'm glad to put you on the spot. Uh, well, I'm doing a public space. Okay. So I'll, I'll just say briefly, so we're going to talk about getting more participation and like why do people participate, why do they not participate, thinking about the best practices committee and some of the recommendations that came up during that and furthering that discussion. So there'll be a whole breakout group on that. And so we'll spend about 45 minutes. Is there a question? I have a question back to the corporate accountability versus economic development. There sounded like overlap. To they me. do. There is some overlap there. Yes. Okay. Um, so in both groups, there's going to be discussion of what our corporations are doing and what can be fixed and what's wrong. Could you speak up, please? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I was just... I was just asking for some clarification around the corporate accountability group versus the economic development since both of them raise the issue of our corporations and how they're corporate citizens in our community. Yeah, we thought that that would be a big group so we divided it in two. And one of the financing, there's also people are talking about divesting from corporate banks. So that will be another big conversation in the financing group. So how can we divest like other cities like Berkeley and Austin, Texas have started to do? Can I, can I so offer yeah. another distinction that might be helpful? Sure. Um, if in the corporate accountability, a lot of people who are feeling criticism of the behavior of corporations in town, um, I would think would be attracted by that title economic development might be also looking at how do we grapple with with economically developing the town and needing something to come in and throw off income. Um, I mean, often when I get in discussions with people in small towns about the problems of corporations, the question, like when we, we, we had demonstrations and we got Nestle to go away and not build a bottling plant using conservation water, the question then was all those little towns up there were hoping for the employment. Um, Turner's Falls and Montague and so forth. So there, there, there's two sides of the coin with, you know, I'm not, you can be really angry and critical, it doesn't mean you want a corporation there, but the question is, is there a way that we can sustainably do economic development and keep our values? I think that's a huge challenge and maybe that's where the other one goes. Okay, so we're going to have each, can we get the facilitators to come in the center? So we've got a facilitator for each group. A facilitator and then there's a, a person who's going to be helping them. So, will you say what you're doing? I'm going to be facilitating the civil liberties group and um, I propose that folks, yeah, do we want to get a show of hands of who's interested in each group just to get sure. a sense of like how evenly divided we are? Great. So who's interested in being in the civil liberties group? Great. Okay, so that's that. Behind you was a hand. Great. And Wendy, public space. Okay, if you're interested in talking about public space, raise your hand. And this includes public meeting space. Public meeting space. Yes. So we've got... Like the banks and... Okay, we've got a, a handful. Great. And Luke? Um, I'm doing economic development. Economic development, if you're interested in that group, raise your hand. Okay, and Allison? I'm doing the corporate accountability and financing group. Corporate accountability and financing, raise your hand. Okay. Okay. And Barbara? Uh, doing civic engagement and participation. So it seems like we've got at least a few people in each group, so that's great. And so what we're going to do is you're gonna, we're going to stay in this room, but we're going to cluster.
So you're going to take your chair and kind of move. So if each of the facilitators could kind of find a corner right now. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. actually, yeah. One, one other just thing. There's, I know there's a lot of, um, there's a handful of elected officials in the room and people who work in the city. And we'd love for you all to, to do as best you can to sort of spread out and, and spread out amongst the groups. So just maybe notice who among your cohort is where. And if there isn't somebody in a group, maybe join that way. I'm going to keep an eye on the time. You're going to give us like a 10 minute. I'll give you warnings. Yep. We're going to do that in a small group. All right, so go ahead and find your group, and we're going to take the next 45 minutes of work. Are you kidding? Corporate accountability? <laughs> Another green. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. I'm representing. Okay. Which corporation are you? Neither. I'm just facilitating. How's everyone? Corporate accountability and financing is over here. Yeah, if you guys could just grab your own chair and make a circle, sort of a smaller version. Hi. I got my second phone book. Which one? There you go. I got it. Excuse me. Do you have paper? Okay. 
So before um, I ask the occupied person to say something about what we're going to be talking about, what it means, can um, we just go around and say our names, maybe one word about what brought us here tonight, um, or how we're feeling right now? I'm Allison. Oh, would you like to join? Us? I'm recording. We're flying the wall. Um, so my name is Allison, and I'm excited to be here. Um, my name's Rich. I'm a little stiff. <laughs> I'm Bill Ames, and uh, I'm going what's going on here with the Ox Tigers. Uh, uh, my name is David Enting, I live in Rocky Hill Co-Housing, and I uh, chair the Peace and Justice Committee of First Churches. I'm very supportive of are. And my issue is in the quality of our society. I'm David Ross, and this meeting grew out of uh, a demonstration that occurred. Uh, uh, what, what's the thing for speaking up? Uh, what's, what's your real like this? <laughs> My name is Buzz. I work in the. My name is Wendy. I live in the. Not officially, I work in Williamsburg. I actually live in Boston. But, uh, um, part of the reason I'm here. I saw the um, video of the Occupy, I would call it, the of the And part of the result of seeing that was that it was that the George Bush was an Occupy movement as I saw it. I'm Pocky Holland, I live in Wright too, and just every time I open my email from certain sectors, I read about about another bill that's uh, that's being enforced, that's holding us um, hostage. And before we wake up and say, "Oh my God, we have no liberties," let's wake up and say, "How do we fight back?" That makes sense. My name is Steve Jones. I live in Florence, or Ward Four. It's interesting to hear seeing words jump from that's not usually the way we think of ourselves. And I just. Civil liberties are so yeah. fundamental. My name is uh, Susan Norton. I'm from the uh, Bay State section of Florence in Ward 5. And I, I feel that civil liberties it seems like they're, they're being struck down one after another. Even by my name is John. I live in Florence. Uh, the actual The louder, please. Uh, my name is Ashton. I was actually threw out of politics because of the recent administration. I wanted to get more involved in the local level. I work at the Haymarket Cafe and I'm an intern at the Media Education. 
the foundation, um, and I was really inspired by the Opera High School Festival that we had at Northampton. Um, those guys from New York came, so I was just interested in it. So, um, so it's clear we're just in this first go around, and then we really need to see out and project in order to hear each other in this room. There's so much else going on. So, I just want to remind everybody to just speak up and project talking <coughs> so that the person across from you can hear you. Um, so, we wanted to start the conversation by asking what in your experience has worked well or is working well with regard to the issue of civil, li civil liberties in our community. So, I don't know how hard that's um, so we wanted to really start with what is working before we go to what is not working. So I just want folks to take a moment to think about what um, is working and what's here and what's going on in different places. What do you know about that you feel like you want to live up and it's really good? Something that's worked well and you're going to have a I that is okay to move around in. Um, and I also went for Smith College and managed some spaces there and am aware of from the kind of internal issues that surround community members coming in and asking for what is it to use our space and also what is it to use our space so to learn how to um, yeah, but not so good because it's incredibly distracting. The life of work keeps us away from these really yeah. important issues. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm Carolyn Oppenheim. I've lived in the valley for 10 years. In the for six of them. I live in Florence. In Pathways Co Housing, I'm a long time social activist. And I thought, um, and, uh, this may be a way to get, get another way to get connected with making change and working for the betterment of this area. Okay, uh, my name is Luke. Um, I'm here. Um, so my name is Luke, and I moved here uh, a couple years ago from San Francisco, where it's very involved in activism there, and I have a been involved here, so this is kind of my time. access to come help out my facilitation at my about 12 years, but I, when I was a kid, I was working with Danny and uh, any sort of a kind of I'm a little bit of a, somebody so, who takes um, it in and just thinks yeah, about it a lot. There's a lot well, happening yeah, inside. There's not a place to come outside. Um, so you know, like, you know, be willing to come it's outside. Like, it's like rich on the night. I'm joined to this. I've lived in North Carolina for a few years. I've been active in a bunch of different places. I've been the most active in the Atlanta movement here. And I'm one of North Carolina's two involved representatives on the water field. Advice is going. I'm going to 
good, but it doesn't seem that good. It seems good. Hospital Hill. We originally wanted a mixed use development for Hospital Hill. We ended up giving it to Colborne because there didn't seem to be any other alternative. <laughs> Now, Paul Morgan has been bought by L3 Communications, one of the largest defense contractors in the country. It's one of the top three. So we've given a big slice of land and a bunch of, a bunch of good things to this huge defense contract. I'm not really happy with that, but I don't know what could have been done differently. I'm a radical and So I guess I, I, I was just going to address the Morgan Stanley piece because I heard so what happens is all things are uh, We do. Um, we borrow money uh, to build things, to build roads, to buy trucks. In this case, it was to build a police station. It was to buy some trucks. It was to actually buy um, cafeteria equipment for this school and all the other schools. And then we bundle that all together. And, and what we're allowed to do is uh, we then turn it over, basically, to a financial company that then puts it out on the open bond market. So it's sold on the open bond market. Um, and essentially, people bid on it. Uh, it's open to any bank. Bank and Florence Savings Bank can bid on it. Anybody can bid on it. In this case, because of the size of it, uh, it came down to you know, larger banks that bid on and, and purchased the bonds through this bond market. So I just wanted to kind of add clarity to that. North Hampton wasn't selecting who it was that was going to buy the bonds per se, other than we turn it over to a bond agent. They go out to the open bond market. And sell it. In fact, most of our money, most of our money is in local banks. But we don't bank with any. Uh, we don't bank with Bank of America. The majority of our money is in Florence Savings Bank, East Hampton Savings Bank, and People's Bank, which is based in Massachusetts. Um, so, to the extent that we do deal with larger banks, it's usually because we're dealing with large financial transactions like this. So I went to school there. Would it be possible? Um, the financing was bundled to a large sum. Would it have been possible to break that down into smaller, smaller loans that could have possibly been bid by smaller banks? I'm just saying. It actually, I, I, I signed the bond, I signed the bonds, and it actually was broken down into like 20 um, individual right, so we've, bonds. We've covered some of what's actually an interesting thing to sign a two million dollar bond, but I had to sign like 10 of these bonds. Um, essentially. Uh, I, I think that it can definitely, they do break it down into smaller bonds, and actually when we, it's, there's different parts of it. So for example, some of that 20 million was for trucks, and those weren't bonded for 20 years, they were only bonded for five years. So the whole bundle was actually several smaller bonds all into one. Um, and we do have some short-term bonds that we sell, which are smaller, and actually local banks do bid on uh, like People's Bank bid on some of our short-term smaller bonds. Um, I think it's just, it comes to space. So I guess what I'm saying is part of this is sort of the economy of scale of the larger financial system that our Hampton doesn't have a lot of control over. But to the extent that most of our money that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, what we pay our employees with is all going to local banks. We actually have made a point of not investing in any of the banks that have been involved in the mortgage crises uh, in the state that our attorney general has investigated. We just spit it all up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see this as a very there's a special interest among the downtown business improvement district. Um, it's, it seems to me that it's required a, a, a constant vigilance to uh, refrain from those types of legislation that would restrict. Um, well, the most recent one was a couple of years ago when there was a you know, move to 
forward legislation that was called uh, uh, anti solicitor but really it was about you know not not allowing any per se on the streets and so you know just on its face it seemed to me that that was a, a strong violation of civil, civil liberties but you know it, it it's a real tension that continues to exist and um, I think it's a it's a challenge for us in the city it's, um, it's a good one for us to work with them. it's good because it's local and and it's an emotional issue too and it's, um, it's one that you know it does really speak to that fundamental right and to that, I would add that the homeless in our community are being basically disappeared. Okay, and people don't have a right to just be where they want to be or live on the street or whatever they want to do. Okay, they're being shuffled out. Anyone who tries to live in the woods or tries to live around town is shuffled out. A lot of people end up leaving the state because of that. Okay. Are they are they criminalized? No. They, well, yes, they're criminalized. Yes. Yeah, it's a 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 it's a
you know? Uh, Adam is next. I had a, a specific suggestion. I'm glad to see the city in recent months has introduced a, a Twitter feed for Northampton MA. Um, which is good, and I'd like to see it expanded so that every committee board has its own Twitter feed. And so if there's information about you know, meetings coming up, meetings canceled, we put up the minutes, or some presentation, um, I think that'd be very useful to sort of basic, keep the citizens informed and engaged. Uh, a specific problem that's arisen several times is uh, meetings will be canceled on the same day it's supposed to take place. And so if you're not a committee member, you're likely to show up to an empty meeting if you're not a and that's happening. So uh, I do hope that that, that can be considered. I would say a rather impossible task because you have to Howard is next. Decisions for the short run. Well, and respond. <laughs> the, the response to what you were saying was, in addition to the, and this is what I was talking about, was trying to institutionalize it, because it was just about people emailing me, or people I run into at my kids' yeah, events, you know, I mean, it's not very, uh, people don't talk to me in a formal sort of way, as, there's no formal setting for people to talk about this. It either happens at my kids' events, people bump into me, or people send me emails, or things like that. And I was going to say that the other things, the other way that people connect, um, Sharon has done some of those things. She started a couple of really influential institutions in Northampton. Um, and you make sure I get this right, Habitat for Humanity and the Survival Center. Okay, so she started two things because she saw a need and started it. And I think that people have been trying to So that's one way outside of the government realm to engage in the community. And there are a lot of these other sort of, I don't know what you'd call them, NGOs in town, um, neighborhood associations, I think Board 3 Neighborhood Association. Um, almost all of the schools have some sort of community group, all sorts of different sorts. Um, ranging from their school councils, which is an elected thing, to their monthly meetings with the principal, which is just a community thing where you can go and find out what's going on in the school and talk to people, and on and on like that. There's tons of these sorts of places that are not talking to a city council or talking to a school committee person, but which are talking to people either who have sort of some sort of an interest, an affinity group, in one way or another, and they all overlap. So that was one thing in terms of where are the access points. And those are the closest thing, those sort of neighborhood associations and things are the closest things to being a um, formalized way to sort of connect from just being people talking to the government. You know, the closest thing we have, but there's, there's, sort of, there's still sort of a missing link in there. Um, oh, things like the NEF and NCTV, and you know, there's tons and tons of these things that are sort of, but they all tend to be kind of compartmentalized, and again, that's the, that's the challenge, as far as I see it, is how to connect all these great little affinity groups in a way that's useful and not just, um, you know, not too much just like going to a barbecue. <laughs> you know, just have it be a little bit focused um, so that it actually can be productive, but not so focused as to be back to where we started. Um, and then, your two things. The, my response to yours is really the, um, it's very similar, actually. It's the, the flip sides of the coin. I'm a big process guy because I think when you don't know the answer, which I don't think any of us do know the answer um, to, to all these questions that are being asked. I mean, we know the specific answer, right? You know, post the meetings and changes. But when we're talking about the slightly bigger questions, um, we don't really have answers. Um, I think for the DPW records, I found out that Coca-Cola takes 117 million gallons per year at the reservoir, and that was in 2008 before the facility expanded. To me, that's a lot of water. In India, 
one of the things that I thought was a problem. It doesn't work. It's really similar plants that you can do off-water. It's over-specialization. It's going to focus on. We've talked about how we specialize how we're changing. So it's about the particular community in our campus is stuck. And our culture is very sort of collateral. And maybe a big ball of yarn. Or something kind of particularly well educated or these are these sustainable and there's a certain sort of really expectation that's where certainly around the world aspect is the what we're doing and, and, and the truth of the matter is that um, this is New York Old North Hampton in the 1970s and 60s and 50s was a fairly working class somewhat run down place this has been a great discussion we do have to so, nominate a spoke, someone who's going to report like back um, to the larger group, what happened here. What I mean more. Um, we have about the two way minutes to solve left that, of discussion after that, and then not. we're going to break up into pairs and share one action step. Well, we're, uh, each of us proposes that they're going to do their daily life or project, or we're also small, that's what we'll talk about here today. And so, does anyone want to nominate someone who would be a spoke or 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 would be a but I, I think that that is what I would like to see is not put this focus on the city council to I mean they have to balance the budget and all this kind of stuff but to have this discussion to do so that we're in this together and making these decisions that are missing. They are missing. But if we don't decide that, you know, we have a set of principles that we're sticking to and we have a goal that we want to get to, we are, if we don't envision where we want to go, we're never going to get there. And that's when I'm involved in taking some risk of doing things that have gone on traditional ways. And it could be, in fact, losing. I think that the set of jobs, but perhaps we create a new set of um, other jobs. So that, I, I don't ever want to make it. We've done it wrong. We've got to do this together, and it's huge. You know, but, okay, Carol. Okay, so we've got like 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and then we're going to do some here. Provide housing, free housing, and food for a few social activists who are willing to dedicate themselves to the economic situation. I think those of us who are interested in this subject should first get together and find out what the concept of social is actually going on in the bar. I think it's a big space. Keep our eye on it because I understand that it is not a transition back to the other side. We're to the community center. I'm going to see if I can provide you guys with the trustees. 
and I came to the senior center saying, I'm senior in this town. Could you use me as a tumor? Even though the group I'm asking me to use space for isn't necessarily a senior and they wouldn't even give us a break. We still have to know right now. Plus, the grant to plus the study plus the kitchen. So that was not great. Just another subject I'd like to bring up before I have some people talk about the terms of safety. I would just like to say fairly succinctly uh, to encapsulate my, my feeling, which is that the big corporations that we've mentioned, and I would definitely add Walmart to that bundle, Coca-Cola, Co-Margan, uh, they are not our friends. I, that's my opinion. That's my view. And what I would I would like to suggest that if any of you here in this group resonate more or less with that sense of space, because that would give me a sense of how this group feels. And I think that's part of the thrust of what, what Occupy is, is, is about. Yeah, I know that they look like they're doing good things, but I feel in, in my gut, I don't know what they do in India. I don't know, need to know how much water they do. They are not our friends.
Speak louder or yes, loudly? Yes, yes. We were the group for public space, and I drew the short straw, so I'm the one delivering <laughs> our notes. Um, there is interest in free or affordable meeting spaces, uh, perhaps uh, an effort toward creating a community center. Um, someone else suggested outdoor space that would be available to move in for purposes of art, performing arts. Um, free space for free refabrication of space. So I'm not sure what that means, but I didn't take the notes, but I'm putting it out there. Um, someone pointed out that you know there's privately owned space that is sitting empty. Um, it's not being used, and of course that's you know private property rights. Um, several members of the group experience is uh, painful, or they said they've given up on finding space in the city uh, for various uses. Um, on the positive side, uh, people pointed out some things that do work well, where people can take free yoga classes or music or uh, use facilities um, in and around the city. Um, there was a, a mention of the reliance on houses of worship or educational institutions. Um, you know, meeting the generosity of those partners in the city in order to gain space for, for use. Um, there was, uh, someone pointed out the dichotomy of our development of uh, public spaces outdoors, like Fitzgerald's Lake or the Turkey Hill area, Mineral Hills, where we're trying to put in hiking trails. Um, anyone from the city or outside the city can come in and use these spaces. Um, if somebody gets hurt, but if someone comes into a school or a building, um, it's a little bit different. So there is a bit of a dichotomy between the built environment <clears throat> and the natural environment that has some improvements like boardwalks and such. Um, someone asked about how, how much would taxes have to be increased for a community space or community center? Would that be exorbitant or affordable? That was just an issue with, we didn't really... Um, address that as far as whether that would be practical or feasible. Um, regarding indoor space um, as a, uh, an action issue, um, it was brought up that there are different rules for different spaces, different buildings, depending upon who has authority for those. So the senior center it comes under the Council on Aging or the director of the senior center. Uh, Pulaski Park comes under the offices of the DPW. And there might be different rules and regulations and standards for the use of these different public spaces and that it might be helpful to have something that was more coherent and cogent. Um, again, that would be much more discussion than what we had today. Um, other issues? 
the money that we've spent on public facilities uh, without creating a place for people to do things like dance, which I think was kind of covered earlier. Um, some of the buildings are not as accessible to get to. Um, people pointed out that like using the Amherst Common is free. We don't have a, a city common per se. Okay. Just a, another few seconds. I think that wraps it up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our topic was uh, what's good in regards to economic development. Our topic involves <laughs> what goes well and not so well with regards to economic development in the city of Northampton. And pardon me if I didn't quite get some of the really great suggestions and ideas. There were quite a few. Um, <clears throat> So some felt that the official unemployment, unemployment rate was down, which is a good sign. Uh, <clears throat> another felt that our downtown has survived despite the impact of local malls and the like. <clears throat> uh, reference was made to the Valley Alliance for work, Worker Cooperatives. Is that right? Um, I think connecting to that of the uh, CSAs, farmers markets, and so on. Um, great, uh, great, uh, great culture adding vitality to to our environs. Uh, we've been recognized for many positive qualities nationally and otherwise. Um, <clears throat> really wonderful natural resources in general. Geographic proximity to other really beautiful and vitally important areas. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, we have features of, of both rural and urban, which is a very nice blend, balance. Uh, someone thought that uh, there were indications that there were new levels of cooperation that extended beyond North Hampton specifically, but you know, slightly beyond our borders with other groups. Uh, another mentioned that uh, he or she thought that, that it was a benefit, the alliance between Cooley and MGH. And then, as far as the <clears throat> things that were spoken of that were not so positive, one was the lack of freely available public space. Mm -hmm. um, that downtown businesses, in fact, do not provide um, real needs for real people. It's more based on tourism, people with you know plenty of cash to spend, weekend shoppers, and that uh, you know some of the basics, the vital necessities, could only be had if you left Main Street. Um, <clears throat> thinking outside the box uh, was referenced, and uh, with the hope that in the future, big local businesses might be asked to actively participate in providing local <coughs> services such as transportation, alternative energy, such as uh, developing river turbines, perhaps in conjunction with the, the wherewithal that a place like Cole Morgan has, has access to, uh, so that we, as citizens of, of this city, actually really put that out there as a real expectation with regards to what some of these big businesses and so-called <coughs> taxpayers might help provide back to the community. Um, one person spoke of this, generally uh, spoke of this as really a culture of economic destruction, uh, one that's taking our wealth away. <coughs> he referenced it uh, with regards to a culture that uh, Basically, imply a lack of a lack of wealth of knowledge, um, and there was a suggestion that wealth creation by sharing what we know with our within our community um, would be seen to be very important. Um, 
drastic change in the currency, and I'm not sure what was implied by that overall. Um, another said we consume goods from outside the community. We need to find the means to produce more of what we need. Uh, someone referenced the lost manufacturing base uh, in general. Um, Oh, and uh, there was a member of our group from the Northampton City Council who uh, basically spoke pretty stridently with regards to the fact that there are no funds for human services, police, fire, and so on. And yet, you know, there's a huge risk in pushing the larger companies to uh, really give off more in terms of tax revenue. Um, Citizen involvement. You know, envision, envision where we want to go. Yeah, yeah. If you could wrap it up. Yeah, I've got one, one left. Um, and then the, the last, last one really was someone offered this, which I thought was really excellent. Um, that we, we as a community can provide free housing and, and food stuff to a group of local activists to further the investigation and causes that we deemed worthy and important. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, issues of diversity and the ways that that um, has impacted who is showing up at the table at meetings like this and other places where decisions are made. Um, hopefully I'm, I'm representing that kind of well. Um, and the, the importance of going out and finding uh, people who may have been in the area for a long time but who have um, gotten shut out as the, the community has shifted towards some of those interests that I had mentioned earlier. Um, also um, mentioned was the surveillance of activists. Um, Juan Among Us had um, an experience of surveillance that um, was disturbing and obviously important when thinking about um, resistance movements, local and uh, beyond. Um, questions about homeland security money and what uh, that means locally. What are the um, requirements of how that money is used on the local scale in <coughs> policing? Um, and also thinking about uh, the local uh, Chicopee Women's Jail and the fact that it's about to undergo an enormous expansion. Um, also on a related note, the the way that the money was channeled to the new police station in Northampton, um, the three strikes law that is um, in process right now, um, receiving a lot of criticism <coughs> and have huge impacts in the state and in our region, um, and other kinds of criminal justice initiatives that uh, beg the question of what our priorities are um, in terms of where our money goes and the implications of that for civil liberties locally regionally in the state, et cetera. Um, so I think that's about what I do. And also basically, uh, you see from that that we were kind of just mapping out the terrain, uh, tried to be somewhat concrete, but also kind of just identifying uh, where we were with those things. Great. Who's left? I'll go. Um, my name is Eli, and I was part of the um, Corporate Accountability and Financing Group. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we kind of, we, uh, we had most people agree that um, a lot of people in the group didn't like big corporations, kind of as a general starting point for, for this. But then, then also people um, want, um, where is it, they, you know, people need good jobs, and uh, Northampton needs to retain businesses who um, are the places where jobs happen. Um, and then our discussion centered around three, um, three different big corporations. Um, the issue of the police station financed by Morgan Stanley came up, um, and it was explained that the city um, borrows money which is dealt with by a finance company, um, and, and so for the, for the city to get the best rate on that bond, um, so, so it spends the least amount of money, it went through the, the larger bank, um, which was Morgan Stanley. So that was the, the rationale behind Morgan Stanley financing the police station. Um, um, there, there's the issue of needing good, good paying jobs and the, the issue of, of retaining corporations in town. Um, someone brought up tax incremental financing as the main economic development <coughs> incentive. Um, and Councilman in the corner there uh, welcomed other ideas for um, incentivizing economic development because that, that is kind of standard standard practice. Um, there there was concern that that this idea of of um, short term incentivizing jobs um, ignored broader long term issues with with corporations with with corporations who do bad things. Um, there was the issue of the Coke plant, I think it is, um, and, and that um, there, the Coke effluent taxes the sewage treatment plant, um, which, which we didn't have an answer to or anything like that, but, but there was, um, people wanted transparency on the full costs of corporate presence in Northampton. Um, yeah, there was, there was um, people expressed the need to make businesses responsible um, both, both for sticking around and and for, um, like I said, not taxing the infrastructure. And someone was wondering about incentive. What incentives are in place for local business? Uh, my name.
name's Max, uh, and I was with the Civil Engagement uh, Group, and I'm doing my best to include everyone as much as I can. Um, we, we did a review of, of the existing mechanisms of how we communicate with local government, um, just running through them, phone, email, fax. Um, there are public sessions held before meetings, uh, before council meetings, uh, before subcommittee meetings. Um, there are some of the other, um, there's visioning meetings. Um, some, um, some contact is also, a lot of the contact is face to face on the street with the local representatives. Um, just kind of catching them and saying hello and saying a piece. Um, the website has information on when the committees and commissions meet and their contact information. Uh, we also re reviewed some of the kind of identified like closest access points to local government and like kind of like groups that talk about issues that we're concerned about. Um, and those included uh, neighborhood community neighborhood community committees, um, what we call area NGOs, um, affinity and special interest groups. The NEF was mentioned, NCTV, um, and so part of the question was how do we connect these groups, um, and more importantly, how do we uh, we identify that there may be a gap between these groups and communication to local government, um, and is there a way to institutionalize this conversation um, with government, local government? Um, some other things that were said were. Uh, some of the questions, I guess, that were posed was how do, how does the public help city government officials make progress on progressive issues? That it was perceived that we live in a fairly progressive area, and uh, how do we help government officials not get bogged down in the uh, governmental process, I guess we call it? Um, one idea that was proposed was say a national holiday for Election Day as a as a community building idea. Um, um, other things that were mentioned were, uh, I guess, commenting on how the new Northampton Twitter feed was a good thing uh, for keeping <coughs> up to date on happenings, especially canceled meetings. It was identified that having fun brings people out and gets them engaged. Um, and that space is a big part of that. Um, uh, using that space for music and sports and uh, arts and culture. Um, it was mentioned that transition to be a transition town it requires space to do that. Um, there was a, it was identified that there was an absence of people in, in our conversation, maybe even in the room, uh, people who are affected by a lot of the issues that we're discussing. Um, even you know people of different politics, uh, cultures, races, religions, and how do we include them? Uh, there was said there was a need to have a more, I guess, comprehensive analysis of our funding that includes includes national as well as local perspective. Um, identify the elephant in the room is the military's funding. Um, and the last thing was that uh, this meeting today, while we're here, was something that the community and the people organized. Um, so. Uh, so obviously in 45 minutes we're not going to solve all of our problems um, and this is a conversation that we definitely hope that will continue and I just want to get a temperature check on how people felt about this meeting and if you'd be willing to come out to another forum and specifically I'm really interested in talking about what we want we talked a lot about what was working well what are some of the problems I think it's also really important to really articulate a vision of what we want to see especially in these areas so if people could do, this means yes, great, I'd love to come back. This is like, it was kind of boring, people talk too much, whatever. This is like, I hated it, I'm never doing that. <laughs> so, um, we'll do a temperature check on how this went for people. Okay, so not too many people. If you have a microphone. A microphone. <laughs> Great, so we just have 10 more minutes. We want to get a couple announcements of upcoming events. People that have announcements? Wednesday night or something? 
that would be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one's at the Media Education Foundation, uh, 7 o'clock, David Cobb of Move to Amend is going to be speaking. Uh, he's one of, uh, he's a national spokesperson for um, some of the national organizing that's going around to amend the Constitution to declare that, to overturn Citizens United. Uh, saying that corporations are not people and money is not speech. So he's going to be kind of talking about ways that our local communities uh, in Western Mass can kind of engage in some of that organizing that's happening across the country. When is that again? Uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the Media at Education Foundation. Oh. The Francis Crow Community Francis Center, Crow. actually. <laughs> Sorry. And then on Thursday, does anybody want to talk about the energy? Anybody from that group? The Brattle Oh, sure. Thursday. It's the day after the Vernon Vermont nuclear power plant is supposed to be closed down, but it's not going to unless we do it. So there's a big demonstration uh, beginning at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock rally at the Commons in Brattleboro and a march up to the gate. It's a three mile walk, and if this summer weather continues, just bring your sunscreen. Um, we really mean it. The, the anti-nuke work started here when we, when we began organizing against Seabrook. It stopped nuclear power plants for 20 plus years. Uh, it's time to do it again. So put on your walking shoes and join us Thursday at, uh, in Brattleboro. Hockey, has what car term? cooling been arranged from um, Northampton? We, will talk, we can talk about that online on the Occupy Northampton website. Thanks. Great. Thank yeah, I have a couple of things. Um, one is um, Elliot Tarry, who has worked with the uh, planners of this, did some great research and has written a wonderful paper called Swimming with Sharks, Northampton City Council Sells Out to the Lowest Bidder. Not to end on a negative note. But it really is um, full of information. And I have 10 copies here that I'll share, and also it's linked on our website. Which, which is occupynorthampton.org. Okay. And the other thing is that I have one for everybody um, of this flyer that's in English and Spanish, and it's um, from Arise for Social Justice in Springfield, and it's um, telling all of us about a wonderful event coming up. I'll just read the first part. End the criminalization of homelessness and poverty. Join us Monday, April 2nd, in solidarity with the National Day of Action for the Right to Exist. In, and this is in Court Square in Springfield. It's uh, gathering at noon on April 2nd, and music at 12.30, and speakers, and then marching to the governor's office. So I have plenty of these, and please pick one up on your way out. <coughs> Any other announcements? Other things? Um, I don't know the dates off the top of my head, but the Prison Birth Project, a local reproductive justice organization, is having two house parties, um, one in Florence and one in Boston, um, in the next month. And you can visit the prisonbirthproject.org to find out more about those and about the organization. Those house parties are a great place to get more information, to get involved, to donate. Um, so the prisonbirthproject.org. Great. There was an announcement back here. Did you have an uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a few different events. Um, also on the 22nd um, is the kickoff of the PBTA's um, hearings regarding um, some fair hikes and the route changes, um, the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. So um, that one will be in Holyoke from 5 to 7 p.m. There will be one in Northampton. It's, I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but it's over a two-week span. I think the, the, uh, if you go to pbta.org, you can find out um, these public meetings where we're going to be talking about changes to public transit in the Viner Valley. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to mention was on uh, April 1st, the uh, Green Rainbow Party will be having its Viner Valley Annual Convention um, at uh, UMass Amherst in the Campus Center, uh, room 101. So we just invite anyone to come. We'd like to talk about sustainability and economic justice and, you know, ways of really concretely doing stuff in our communities. Um, and then last but not least, um, April 14th is uh, the Jobs with Justice Annual Conference in Holyoke, and that will be great too. So uh, just look up uh, wmjwj.org for more on that. Thanks. Great. Other announcements? All 
Northampton City Council meets first and third Thursday of the month. Public comment is at 7. That was my announcement. Okay. Any other announcements? I just thought it might be important. Um, people forgot about the war and things like that. Today is the anniversary of the invasion of Iraq. I don't know if anyone knew that, but that maybe a moment of silence would be good. March 19th, 2003. We're still there. I don't really see an end. Um, maybe a moment of silence for that. I think would be appropriate, seeing as this is a community meeting. Mass Development is having a meeting for We're going to Thank you. Just quick, Mass Development is having a meeting for Village of uh, Hospital Hill. If anyone wants to know about it, they can talk to me or try and find out about it. <laughs> All right, we have. I just want to announce that the the Western Mass, the Occupy Northampton General Assembly meets every single Saturday at the Media Education Foundation Community Room, and the meetings are at four o'clock, four to six. And we're starting to meet outside in those two days. We're going to be meeting at Pulaski Park again, starting in March. I just want to thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming out. Great work. We'll do it again, for sure. This is donated from Equal Exchange, a local business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair trade coffee and chocolate. So we'll do three. three. Yeah. Okay, great. So here. Okay, the first. Sue. Sue Nortal. Sue's still here. Norton. Sue Norton. Sue Norton. Sue Norton. Okay. 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 David. Lauren, David. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Hey. And Lisa, just for the last one, I just like to say uh, thank you to the city council, yes. particularly yeah. uh, Bill Dwight, for meeting the onrush, perhaps not well uh, orchestrated entree of Occupy Northampton to result in this fine meeting. It's very appreciated, and I think that um, it shows what we can do uh, when we have this kind of city government and we can work together. So thank you. Thank you. Rich. Rich. Can you check? Okay. 